three, two, one, let's go. What's going on family? Adam here with a video. So today is Wednesday, October the 26th, and I pray all you guys are having a blessed day. Now, if you happen to be new to this channel, on this channel, we're watching for the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon, and we're going to be ready for him on this channel. So family, keep your eyes on the sky, because our redemption draweth nigh. Okay guys, as many know, parts of the world yesterday experienced a partial solar eclipse, including Israel. And if you remember, not too long ago, we talked about how I believe that this solar eclipse was a warning to the world that the tribulation is about to kick off. Well guys, I believe the Most High God has one more warning coming up on November 7th to the 8th. And this time, it's in the form of a blood moon or a lunar eclipse. Now, before I give you my reasons why I think this is a warning to Israel that the tribulation is about to begin, let me give you two scriptures that are very relevant to today's video. The first scripture is Joel 2.31, in which it says, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And the second scripture is Luke 21.25, and it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, the stress of nations, or perplexity, the seas and waves roaring. Now, family, history has shown us that blood moons in Israel have coincided with major events for the Jewish people. And family, let me prove this to you. Okay, from the years 1493 to 1494, there was a series of blood moons. And these blood moons coincided with difficult time for the Jews. These blood moons coincided with King Ferdinand's expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1493. 37,000 Jews were forced to leave Sicily. And then in 1494, Jews suffered in Poland and Italy. So these blood moons saw European-wide persecution of the Jews. Okay, family, fast forward to 1949 to 1950, there was yet another series of blood moons. So let's see what happened to the Jews around this time. Okay, for starters, the 1948 to 1949 Arab-Israeli conflict when Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, and Lebanon invaded Israel, we saw that go down during these blood moons. And these blood moons also came right after Israel became a nation in 1948. Also, these series of blood moons also coincided with the Armistice Agreement, and also with Israel's 1950 law of return, which allowed anybody who identifies as a Jew the privilege to come back to the land of Israel. Now let's fast forward to the years 1967 to 1968. And there was yet another series of blood moons over Israel. So guys, let's see what happened to the Jewish people and Israel around this time. Well, for one family, the Six-Day War happened between June 5th and 10th, 1967. When the armies of Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and later Iraq come against Israel and they failed miserably. And as a result of this, Israel gained full access to Jerusalem for the first time in 2,000 years. Also, guys, at this time, the Arab census was formed, which eventually opened the door for major Jewish persecution going down the road. And now, family, let's fast forward to the years 2014 to 2015. Now, I think a lot of us will remember this blood moon tetrad as these blood moons fell on feast days. So let's look and see what happened to Israel and the Jews around this time. Now this is when a lot of people say the Palestinian uprising began. And we saw the start of unprovoked attacks to Israeli citizens. So you see family, major events for Israel and the Jewish people have coincided with blood moons or fell in the time around blood moons. Now blood moons over Israel have also coincided with other events. Now everything in this list I'm about to give you happened within 24 hours of a blood moon over Israel. So blood moons in Israel have also coincided with earthquakes in Israel, rocket attacks from the enemies of Israel, Arab aggression and persecution, feast days and sandstorms, political turmoil, and much, much more. There's over 30 events that I can find that have coincided with blood moons over Israel. 
Now, family, this upcoming blood moon on November 7th to the 8th comes two weeks after the solar eclipse and just days after Israel's next round of elections. Family, that's not a coincidence. Now, guys, we know that the Israeli calendar is based upon the moon cycles. For example, Feast of Trumpets starts with the spot of the slither of the new moon. And here recently, we've seen tensions rising in Israel the past few months. As Israel is experiencing a wave of Palestinian aggression, Israel continues to be prepared for the role it will play during the tribulation. So could this blood moon in November be the final warning to the nation of Israel before the tribulation starts? I do believe so. Within two weeks, Israel will see a partial solar eclipse and a blood moon. That's rare. Two signs in the sky within two weeks. Like I said, that's very rare. And guys, if you throw in the fact that the Jews are making big steps towards building that third temple, the red heifers have arrived in Israel. Rabbis claim they are meeting with Messiah. The escalating tensions in Israel and the talk of a two-state solution and then throw in the Israeli elections, there's a perfect storm brewing. This upcoming blood moon, a.k.a. lunar eclipse, could very well be the final warning to Israel before the time of Jacob's trouble begins. And family, remember, the prophet Joel described major events in the sun and moon immediately prior to the return of Christ. Jesus also said that we would see cosmic disturbances just prior to his return. Matthew 24, 29 and 30, and the word of God says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So you see, family, the prophets and even Jesus himself said we would see signs in the sky, stars, sun, and moon in the end times. And family, in my humble opinion, it appears that the Most High God is giving the world, specifically Israel, the last warning before the tribulation starts. And let's not forget what the Word of God says in Genesis 1.14. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. Family, you see, the stars, the sun, and the moon are under the jurisdiction of God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And over the years, the Most High has used the heavens to warn people of what's to come. Just as the rainbow in the sky is a sign of the covenant that God made not to destroy the earth with water again. Family, I firmly believe that this solar eclipse that happened yesterday and the upcoming blood moon is a sign that the Daniel 9.27 covenant with many is about to be signed. Family, this also could be a warning concerning the Israeli elections. And also a warning about the man the rabbis say is Messiah, and they say they've been meeting with him, and he's about to reveal himself. Family, to be honest, God works in threes. This could be a tribulation warning, warning about the Israeli elections, and a warning of the coming false Messiah. Family, think about it. In the past four months, we've seen a lot of signs in the sky. We've seen the sky turn blood red in parts of the world. We've seen blood moons. We've seen eclipses, conjunctions, and people all across the world, including myself, have seen these unique circle-looking rainbows in the sky. This is actually one you see on your screen right here. They are very beautiful. Family, the heavens and the skies are declaring the intimate return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, my beautiful family, in my humble opinion, it has never been more apparent that we are living in the biblical last days. Everything, and guys, I mean everything that Jesus said would be taking place prior to his return. It's all happening in this generation. It's all converging in this generation, the fig tree generation, the generation that will not pass away. The way Bible prophecy is jumping off the pages of the Bible into world events is truly unprecedented. And family, the fact that we are living in the last days, honestly the last seconds, is why the message of the gospel is so important. And family, as always, let's close this video out by me giving you the gospel of our salvation. Because the message of the gospel is so important here in these end times. Now family, the message of the gospel is simple. But what we've seen happen is man comes along. They try to twist the gospel. They try to add words to it. And I'm sorry family, it just don't work that way. 
So according to scripture found in our Bible, Jesus was born of a virgin and family. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life. Jesus lived his entire life without ever once sinning. That's why Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for the remission of our sins. And at the age of 30, Jesus began his earthly ministry. And in a matter of three years, Jesus changed the entire world forever. And Jesus did family because here we are, nearly 2,000 years later, still talking about our Jesus, still singing praises to our Jesus. And then family at the age of 33, and the biggest act of love that humanity has ever seen or will ever see, Jesus was nailed on that cross. Jesus had a crown of thorns placed upon his head. Jesus spilled his perfect, innocent blood for the remission of our sins. My sins, your sins, your daddy's sins, your daughter's sins, everybody's sins. Family, Jesus did it all on the cross. And then Jesus stayed dead for how long, family? For three days, three days, three days. At that third day, he busted that tomb wide open. Hey, family, no tomb could hold our Messiah. Then Jesus ascended to go be with the Father. And on this channel, we do know he's coming back for us soon. And guys, what is it we're looking for? That would be that Titus 2.13 blessed hope. And family, world events, and Bible prophecy is declaring the soon and intimate return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Family, stay in that full armor of God and keep on looking up. Because I promise you this, our redemption draweth nigh. Jesus is coming soon. Well, my beautiful family, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Man, you guys are such a huge blessing to me. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and feel free to share it. Family, it helps out a lot and I truly do appreciate it. And if any of you guys have any prayer requests at all, drop them in the comment section below. And myself and someone from the prayer team, we'd be honored to pray over your prayer requests. And also, if any of you guys are in need of a free King James Version Bible, email me at emailwatchmanadam at gmail.com. That's the email you see at the top of your screen. And we'd be happy to get you a free King James Version Bible right out to you. We're going to be mailing Bibles again this upcoming Friday. And also, if any of you guys want to contribute to either the Bible ministry or our homeless outreach, check the description box below. There's ways you can do so. All contributions either go to the Bible ministry or to our homeless outreach. As always, please pray about it first. Well, family, I love you. Don't forget, we got the Bible Prophecy News Update coming up tomorrow. We do that every Thursday. Till next time, Watchman Adam signing out. I love you guys and keep on looking up because our redemption draweth nigh. Any day now, I'm going to meet y'all all in the clouds because Jesus is coming soon. Take care, family. Love you.